Hey guys, Zach Ninja here, and today I'll be showing you why the handling stat is the most important for any class and what handling stat you should be aiming for when tuning and upgrading cars for any class really. So these are the maps that you're going to get online and generally they're more speed focused so overall there's going to be a handling stat that's going to be optimal for every single circuit combined but obviously you can't do that but online you're going to want that because you don't know what circuits you're going to get or what sprints you're going to get so I'm just flicking through them right now as you can see they're more speed focused and I point attention to this one because this seems to be the track that has an optimal handling which is the average of all the possible tracks you can get online and also it's a circuit which is quite helpful because when you go around the circuit you can you can do another lap when you finish and you don't have to restart the entire thing so it's a lot better to do circuits in rivals than it is to do sprints but since this track I've already gone really try hard on, I'm going to use this other one instead because it's quite similar and yeah it's just about as speed focused, about the same sort of thing. There are other tracks you can try but I'm going to use this one and with that said I'm going to show you what I mean and go into the rivals. So this is my best lap round here in my Eclipse. It has 6.3 handling, which is what I think is the most optimal handling for general online. In obviously different uh, setups of online tracks will want more or less handling. Like if it's got the Horizon circuit involved or, or if it's got the Colossus involved, you know, want less handling. And say handling and not speed, this handling's a lot more reliable at determining how the performance of the car will be. Like, uh, less handling will make, mean the car's a lot faster, and more handling will mean the car's a bit slower. Generally, if you're doing the same upgrades, like you're not doing a lot better or worse brakes, or something like that. But, uh, yeah, that's this lap. I've done more. I've done eight for this first one because I'm just warming up on the track. So my first lap, like my first uh, time here, isn't a lot slower than all my others. So this next tune is pretty much proof that you don't really want to go for any of the other stats because this looks like it's. Oh yeah, this is like way better than my other car because it's got way more handling and only slightly less speed and way more braking but uh, as you can see here look I really slow on the straights compared to my previous time which is that one there like um it doesn't look like it with the speed it's only like a tiny little bit less speed on the handle on the stack but now the reason why I'm a lot slower is because I've got way more handling like you can pretty much just ignore the speed stat in every class but S2 because in S2 you're going to be over 10 handling anyway and then you're going to just want to judge it on the speed how well your car is going to handle so it's kind of the opposite way around for that but yeah you're going to be way too slow on the straights when you've got this much handling and you're not going to really be able to catch up to anyone on the, on the sprints like this so I've also done a speed build here which has got 5.9 handling this is probably the lowest you want to go for most tracks. Yeah, it's a lot slower on the corners, but it's really difficult to control at this point. Like, going much below 6.3 can really be hard to handle. And you can see the speed, it doesn't say it's faster, even though I do have a lot more horsepower and I can catch up to myself here on the streets. But it's just a lot worse at braking and everything. It's like, I can't really handle it very well and it's super difficult. I mean some of it will come down to like personal preference of how you 
how you can control certain cars, but I wouldn't go really this handling unless you're like super confident because I think I do want to end up like catching up to myself here but uh, it's like again it's like being able to consistently do this online compared to time trials can be a problem so this is an alternative you can do to get about the same handling you can use the aero and use bad tires if you really want to use aero but I don't think on this car it's very good like I've got front and rear but uh, it doesn't really do much on this vehicle so I think this is kind of a bad example usually it's actually uh, it's, it's actually faster than using the good tires and no aero because you can get a bit more horsepower out of it because tires don't really cost uh, I mean tires cost too much PI and aero doesn't cost as much on bad tires but again the Eclipse aero is really terrible so I can't really catch up to myself here but just know with some cars this is a very good technique and maybe you want to try it but uh, yeah it's quite hard to control on these bad tires so I don't really end up beating myself but it is a good option if you want to try also I did do more laps than two but this just ended up being my best so moving into S1 this is what I recommend for the handling for 8.5 so, like, uh, you don't really need the Forza Aero for S1 as long as you've got enough handling. Like, uh, you can go a little bit lower than 8.5 because uh, I think this is a tiny bit much, but I couldn't really get any lower with this Lamborghini. Like, I've got an F1 which, with 8.3 and that's pretty fine. But, uh, again, it really depends how much you can control the car. Like, you want to go maybe. 0.1 and 0.2 above if you're not that great at controlling these slightly lower grip cars. And uh, also not having any aero really does help in S1 because you don't have the drag slowing you down which the aero does. Unless of course you've got bad tyres and aero so you can have more horsepower to sort of mitigate that. This is my aero build. So it's got the same tyres and everything, just a bit less horsepower because it's got the aero. And as you can see I am better around the corners, but it's not that much better. Like, uh, I still struggle around here. I mean, for some reason there, I tried to improve that corner, but I just couldn't get around it faster than my other time. Like, this second lap has always been my best for some reason and I couldn't beat it, I did loads of laps for the aero <laughs> but anyway yeah it's just a lot slower like on the straights because the aero is just p pulling you back really like and this is what a lot of people do in S1 just stick balls at aero on whatever supercar and just call it a day but it turns out that's not really what you want to do if you're over 8.5 handling and again the lower handling build for S1 you don't really want to go below 8 because it can be start getting very difficult below that point to keep up because you're not going to really have enough grip and I'm on the stock tyres here so yeah I mean if you had aero you'd probably be able to make up for it because you'd have the right handling but yeah yeah it's a bit too low and I can't really catch up like it's really really struggling around the corners so if you're going to do like a really old car or whatever you're definitely going to need the aero and if you do and you still can't get up to like 8.23 then it's probably not worth it using it for S1 because You'll just be too slow on the corners and won't be able to catch up. So what you want to do when picking a car is go to the promo so you can see all the cars when they're stock and sort by class and also choose the drivetrain you want so you don't have to swap it 
and basically it just makes it so it costs a lot less PI when you're using non-race gearboxes and also you're not basically completely changing the car so with that in mind you generally want to aim for like about five-ish handling if you're going to change the tires but if you want to leave stock tires on in order to get the optimal handling of like 6.3 for road then the car generally wants to come with with about six ish or 5.9 maybe like this raptor could probably get to like six six point three if you did weight reduction and tire thickness and everything but obviously for road you're gonna want lower cars and lighter cars as well because being light is quite useful as you uh, hang on let me just give an example here yeah, the Bentley Continental like this is, is at the top of a class got about the right handling but it's just it's too heavy it's it, you can't really accelerate properly with it like being heavy is quite underpowered and you've only got like 700 horsepower for like how much weight you have that's not that's not a lot for how heavy this thing is I'll show you with my wait I'll get out of this my current builds say uh, all drive as well so it, it doesn't skew the balance uh, yeah my 240 it's got about same handling a bit more because of the rear wing but it can skew handling stats as well that's one thing to note though if you stick the rear wing on it doesn't really increase the handling that much even though on the stat it says it does so Bear that in mind, if you don't have any of the aero, uh, it's quite accurate. And if you only have one piece of aero, it can be inaccurate. And having both aero is quite useful. Uh, the, the handling stat is quite useful. But if you've only got one piece, it's a bit inaccurate, so be careful with that. This has like actually like 6.2 handling. But anyway, see, it's almost like almost, well, no, let's say almost 700, it's like 150 horsepower off, but it's like, it weighs like a ton less than the Bentley, so it's have ridiculously more acceleration, and it's just way more nimble overall, so being lightweight is really good, but you don't want to get too light, because sometimes, like with this 8, oh wait, no, <laughs> that's my power build to be able to drive. If you go too light like this Lotus 11 I've got here, it can have like a lot of good power to weight ratio, but you just won't have really the top speed to compete in uh, in online. Never mind the fact that you'll be bullied off the track. So about 6.3 handling for A class, about 8.3 for S1, and for B class you generally want to go for about 5.3 handling, maybe a bit less because of the free roam rushes, but 5.3 for B class is what seems to be working for me, like my Celica build here and the Quattro's on a bit more, but the Quattro's generally OP because of its gearbox, so it makes up for that. It's basically free handling with the Quattro, really. So my Rover's quite a nice build with a that handling to my Stratos, Railton is actually decent, and my Pulsar, like these are all really good, and oh, the Cobra which is quite OP, this has got less handling, it's got a ridiculous speed, like 400 horsepower, 50 horsepower in B class, like compared to my others, it's like the Railton's a lot heavier, which is why the Cobra is so OP, but uh, but yeah, that's it for B class. And oh yeah, also uh, for stuff like cross country in A class and rally. Uh, I think I said at the start, but yeah, you generally want less handling. Like some of my builds here have got more, but what you generally want to go for is about six, which is why I have this my Raptor. This is super good in A class cross country because it's got lower handling. 
and that makes it just ridiculous on the free roam rushers it's like faster than most people's the stock tires you don't need cross-country tires for a class and same pretty much goes for the rally like you want lower handling but in a class you really do want rally tires so to get low handling of rally tires in a class just pick a car that's really bad stock like uh, I think I have one here somewhere it's it's a Lance here no the Fulvia this has got 6.3 handling with the rally tires so it's got quite low handling and rally tires which is really good which is also why one of the most OP cars for a class is where is it the atomic punk the atomic punk has the same handling as my fulvia but it's just got the larger rear wheel uh don't seem to have favorited it but you get the point and yeah i think that's about it